I present you a case of retinal fold in a familial exudative vitreoretinopathy. An eight-year-old boy presented with low vision in the right eye since many years but decreasing with time. The anterior segment was normal. Best corrected visual acuity was counting fingers in the right eye and uh, 10 over 10 in the left. The wide field retinography taken with the Clarus uh, Zeiss retinographer showed uh, a huge retinal fold extending from the papilla crossing the macula all the way to the temporal side uh, in the right eye. In the left eye, the fundus was normal except for the presence of uh, pre- and intraretinal hemorrhages uh, in the most uh, temporal area around uh, 2 to 3 o'clock. The OCT taken uh, with uh, large 23 mm scans uh, with uh, X1 Xephilio by Canon showed the adhesion of the vitreous cortex to the retina with retina traction creating a macular fold and uh, retina dragging uh, toward the temporal side. The diagnosis was familial exudative vitreoretinopathy with uh, a retinal fold. Fevre is an inherited retinal vascular disorder that starts with a vascular peripheral retina and presents extraretinal fibrovascular proliferation, exudation, retinal dragging, folds, abnormal vitro retinal interface, and tractional retinal detachment in different degrees. The management in this case was 25G parsplana vitrectomy with the aim to release the traction between the vitreous and the retina hoping to open the macular fold. Vitrectomy starts by observing the fold all the way to the temporal side and uh, starting a core vitrectomy trying to observe the adhesion uh, between vitreous and uh, macula in the central area. Care is taken in gently detaching the vitreous from the papilla and the macular area. Of course, uh, trying to pay attention not to induce any iatrogenic break. Addition, as you can see, is very strong, especially over the papilla. And I am trying to break the, uh, the adhesion um, in, uh, in pieces in order not to induce too much traction. The vitreous is released uh, from the papilla first and then uh, removed uh, in the macular area. Once it is removed uh, in the whole area involving the fold, uh, I do not insist in pulling the vitreous uh, and uh, I observe the presence of uh, lesions in the retina that uh, I'm not sure I should interpret as a full thickness breaks uh, or just a thinning and a schizis area. So I concentrate in removing as much vitreous as I can all around uh, that area first. And then I try to remove uh, the remnants of vitreous with the forceps but I realized the adhesion is too strong, so I do not insist uh, in releasing the adhesion. Under air, I try to aspirate subretinal fluid, but uh, with uh, low intraretinal pressure, not to induce breaks where they are not present. And then I check with the blue staining to see if the staining passes through the lesion. It doesn't happen, so I interpret this sign as absence of full thickness breaks. Maybe those areas are just uh, areas of thinning of the retina and not full thickness breaks, fortunately. So I proceed with the fluid air exchange 
and I try to open uh, the folder with the tunnel scraper gently because this is not an easy tool. You can induce iatrogenic lesions with the tunnel scraper as well. So these are just uh, extremely gentle touch with the aim to open the fold. Uh, still, I'm not sure about those areas uh, with suspect breaks. Uh, so I prefer not to use the laser because I cannot um, attach the retina completely. I don't want to aspirate any subretinal fluid um, internally. So I decide to induce a, a scar with the cryo probe. Uh, in order to create a stronger adhesion uh, between the retina and the choroid uh, in uh, the area with the suspect uh, breaks. You will see the white lesion induced by the cryo in uh, a few seconds and this is done under air. In this way I don't have to aspirate the subretinal fluid actively with the uh, either passive or active uh, suction and uh, so the aim is uh, to induce a scar to extend uh, the fluid air exchange and just allow the fold to open up with the time and this is the post-operative uh, appearance uh, one month after surgery in the top right uh, picture you see a reminder of the pre-operative appearance so in the post-operative you see that uh, the fold is open you can see on the left uh, the white tissue scar induced by the cryoprobe again this is pre-op counting fingers and post-op at one month 3 over 10 I think it's a great result the OCT preoperatively shows the traction and the vitreous uh, retinal adhesion. On the right you see the retina is completely released by any type of traction. There is a tiny layer of subretinal fluid which I hope will uh, totally reabsorb in time with uh, again a new improvement in vision. So in the end I think that a retinal fold associated to familial exudative vitreo retinopathy certainly might benefit from vitrectomy and release of traction.